Hey everyone, it's Sherry Vegas here and in this textured art tutorial today we're going to be doing how to create this really cool dots and lines textured artwork that has been highly requested. To get started, I'm going to be mixing up some texture paste. I'm using fine line surface filler as well as some gel medium and a little bit of PVA glue. I find that the PVA glue does help sort of bind it all together, but you can use sort of whatever texture paste mixture that you want to use. It's completely up to you. Everyone has their own sort of recipe, but basically it's mostly the filler, a little bit of the gel medium and some PVA glue, just a dollop. And and then I give that all a really good mix together. You want to make sure that you mix it really well because we don't want to have any lumps or bumps and you do find that a lot of the fillers or spackle paste will have a lot of lumps already like naturally in them. So it's really important especially for this style because we are going to be doing a lot of the fine lines. We want it as smooth as possible. Then once I've done that because I am using a canvas um, you can also use an artist wooden board. The wooden boards are the best option when you are doing textured paste, but they are also more expensive. So you can still use a normal stretch canvas. What I like to do to prep the stretch canvas is getting some of my texture paste mixture and just a little scraper tool and applying that to the surface of my canvas. This helps one create a really nice even surface of that textured paste and it also will cover any of the weave that you'll see from the canvas. It also just makes the canvas a little bit more stronger, especially if you are using a stretch canvas. It prevents it from being able to move as much. I generally like to do one to three coats depending on what I am doing. So between each coat, I just let that fully dry and then apply the next layer until I'm happy with my coverage. Now to create my line work for this, I'm going to be using either a disposable piping bag or if you don't have those you can always just use a ziplock bag and the easiest way to do this to add your texture paste in is to just get a cup put the corner of your ziplock bag over your cup and then just pile your texture paste on in and then this will create sort of like a little makeshift piping bag then with the texture paste in the Ziploc bag, I just kind of get any of the air bubbles out and then just twist that off and put that to one side. I do like to just kind of sketch out with just a pencil the sort of rough design of where I want the lines to go, just so I've got a little bit of an idea. If you wanted to, you could obviously draw all of the lines that you wanted to place down and really work out the design before you've even started but I'm just kind of doing where I kind of want the bigger sort of more solid lines and kind of how I want the flow to the work. And it doesn't matter with the pencil because we're going to be adding the texture paste over the top. So you're not gonna even see that sort of pencil marks once there is the textured paste over the top. Then with my Ziploc bag, I just cut off the corner and cut it off as big as you want your lines to be. So with this, I'm gonna be doing two. I'm gonna be doing one thicker lines and then I'm also gonna be doing another Ziploc bag with more of the texture paste and cutting that a little bit smaller. So that way I get thinner lines and I get a variation between the two different lines. And the great thing about this sort of style is if you do one and you're not that happy with it, so you can see here I've put one down and I'm just, it doesn't look the neatest. I'm going to just scrape that straight off. So you just scrape it straight off and put it into your little Tupperware container or takeaway container that you're storing your texture paste in. You definitely wanna store your texture paste in something with a lid so that way you've got a lot of time to work with it because it will start to set within that half an hour to an hour mark. So if it's open to the air, it's going to set a lot faster. Once I've got all the big lines down, I'm then gonna start with my second bag and I've cut this to be a lot smaller and I'm gonna start adding in all of those finer lines. This gives a really beautiful variation to it and just creates a little bit more interest to the piece. 
It is really important to try at this stage to get the line work as perfect as possible because it's going to save you so much effort down the track than trying to fix it once it is dry if your lines are really rough. So it's really important to have a really smooth consistency of texture paste so you don't get any lumps or bumps as you're piping it out and to also make sure that you do the lines as perfect as possible because if you're not happy with them and they dry it's a lot more work to kind of fix them. After I got most of my lines done I did start using the same texture paste in the same piping bag and started adding some dot detail to this piece. Now I wanted these dots to be quite perfect and smooth but you can see here as I'm piping them they're getting a little bit of a point to them and normally I would use a paintbrush with a little bit of water and just press that on top to kind of push down that point but because I didn't get to them in time because my texture paste had started to dry too much when I did try to press them down it didn't work the texture paste had already dried and they had stiffened into peaks which I did think I could fix with just a bit of sanding but I did end up doing a different technique and I'll show you that in a little bit because I wasn't 100% happy with these dots at the end. I left my piece to dry for 24 hours before I went back to it. You can see here I did get a few cracks. That can happen for many different reasons. It can happen from overworking your texture paste and working with it while it is drying, which can cause it to get cracks. It can just be from doing your texture paste too thick. And when it does dry, it will contract. It can be from a temperature change in the room. So trying to set it too fast will cause it to contract too much and that will cause cracks. But luckily there is a really easy fix and that's just using the same mixture. I get a paintbrush and I just fill those cracks in because it is a filler. So it is designed for that. And once you do that, you don't even notice that there was any cracks there to begin with. So if you ever do get cracks, let it fully dry and then just go back in with more of your textured paste mixture. Then once again, I just let that fully dry before I can start my sanding. So sanding is just going to give me a really smooth finish. If you like that texture look coming through, you don't have to sand, but I think this looks really good when it is all sanded back. It looks very slick and I feel like it doesn't necessarily look like textured paste when it is sanded. So I like to start off with a slightly rougher grit. So the sandpaper that I am using is a 200 grit to start with and then once I've kind of got all of the visible rough textured marks I then switch over to a finer grit sandpaper so the finer grit one that I'm using is a 400 and this just finishes it off it takes any of the rougher grit sanding marks away and just gives it that really beautiful slick smooth surface now this does take a little bit of effort to kind of get all around all of the different grooves so that is why it is so important when you are piping out the better you pipe the less sanding you have to do at this stage now i did end up sanding back all of the dots because I wasn't happy with the little sort of points that they had on them and when I did send them back they kind of ended up just a little bit flat and they weren't looking amazing. I did end up fixing the dots with the way that I applied them and changing up the method. Right now I'm just giving it a coat with spray paint because I want this piece to be a white finish. You can use whatever spray paint you want, this is a satin finish and the reason why I like to use spray paint is because it doesn't leave any any brush marks to it. Now you can see here the dots don't look that amazing because they have been sanded down to remove that sort of point to them. So I decided I was going to grab the texture paste that I already had and just dilute that down with some water till I got the consistency I wanted. So I'm going to be making sort of like a slurry kind of sludge. You don't want it to be too thin because obviously when you put it on it won't hold any shape but you don't want it to be too thick where you're going to get those sort of points again where it holds too much shape. So once I got the consistency to where I wanted it I put it into a bottle. So just a squeezy bottle. I had this ne needle nose point bottle which I took the needle off and that gave me the perfect size nozzle to do my dot work. 
Now obviously you'd be doing this instead of the piping bag but to help fix this piece because I just really wasn't happy even after I spray painted it with these dots I went back over with my squeezy bottle and that diluted down texture paste mixture and you can see how much more easier it is to apply it. I don't get any stiff peaks with these dots and they hold their shape really well. So I was a lot more happier with this technique than using the piping bag. And once I redid all of my dots, I then just went back in with some more spray paint and sprayed the whole thing white. Now these dots were not perfect but they did look a lot better so I definitely recommend going straight to the squeezy bottle when it does come to doing the dot work. Now if you enjoyed this tutorial then you'll enjoy my little mini masterclass on how to create 3D sculptured artworks as well. This is a brand new technique that I've been working on and this will be up on my private membership here on YouTube and it's available to all membership levels so definitely go and check it out if you really love textured artwork and you want to learn how you can create amazing like textured artwork pieces just like this. I've got a really in-depth tutorial up there and that's the video for this month for my YouTube membership. Each month I do put out a video that is available to all the different levels and that is a mini masterclass in a particular style as well as a whole bunch of extra goodies. And if you did like this video please give it a big thumbs up. It helps this video out here on YouTube because it tells the algorithm to share it with more people and if you are new to my channel please do subscribe as I've got massive list of all different art styles and crafts that you can do all tutorials so definitely go and check those out but thank you so much for watching.